tired, waiting for this uh, clock to slowly tick up and go down. And we're having the battle of the throw-ins, it looks like, over here with the Lady Eagles now having a throw-in. Galfano with the ball, passes it back to Daigle. Daigle passes it all the way forward. Looks like to Bordelon. Bordelon's going to drive it in. She's from the 18. Driving it in. Gets around the defender. She drives it in into the six-yard box. Passes it. Oh, hits it right on the outside of the goal. Not able to capitalize on it. That would be a shot, though, from Bordelon. That was good footwork from Bordelon. She's doing very good work with the ball. She's getting around the defenders, almost making it look a little easy, if I have to say. But she's... Very impressive with her ball, uh, with the soccer skills. And yeah, and good touch on the ball. And here with the possession, the, the overall possession that the Lady Eagles have had, it's really just worn out the, the must Lady Mustang defense. They just keep putting the tack on. And here again, they try to do it again. Bordelon tried to get it over to uh, Polk. Polk not able to finish it off. She couldn't get it too quick on time. Yeah, she's so had a very active uh, second half. It looks like, yeah. uh, looks like she's actually overtaken... Kate on the shots. Uh, she, she has seven shots compared to Scalfano six. It'll be a goal kick here coming from the Lady Mustangs. It looks like uh, Carry On is uh, Natalia Carry On is taking over the goal kick duties for the Lady Mustangs now that Guerrero's out. That's right. Johnson's going to be having the throw in here. You know who I feel pretty upset for? Miss Wolf back there. <laughs> <laughs> All lonesome. She's just hanging out, no one to talk to. That, and that's one thing that we talked about, Tom, was the, goal, the keeper position gets so lonely sometimes. Sometimes no one's back there to talk to you or hang out with you. You know, it's just, oh, I'm just back here minding my own business. I can tell you probably somebody who's not, uh, who doesn't feel sorry for, <laughs> their, for their daughter is <laughs> Mr. Miss Wolf because as a keeper's parent, you don't want. <laughs> no action is better than too much action. <laughs> so, That's uh, exactly it. So it's almost like being the pitchers. It's almost like being the pitchers, mom and dad. You know, you just don't. Sometimes you just don't. Why'd you sign up for that job? That's so. exactly it. So let's do a little uh, quick update as to how we got to this point. We've still got a uh, little under five minutes to play till we get down to the two minute mark, and then we're certainly going to have several minutes of stoppage play. Because uh, Guerrero has, was injured twice uh, in this one. In fact, we took a commercial break, and I think I ran four commercials at 30 seconds apiece. So that's at two minutes. But uh, it's three to nothing. How did we get here? Because our, our, our uh, video did run out at 645, and I didn't even think about looking at my clock. Uh, and But we are just started up on the boys' broadcast, uh, which we'll have to extend. Uh, but people tuning in now are seeing the girls on the field. The Lady Eagles leading it three to nothing. How do we get there, Nick? Yeah, we uh, they ended up. Uh, it was I think it was two nothing when we lost a stream, and and then we had a a, a, a great um, corner kick by Daigle, and she she played it all the way across to the backside, and and Polk put it in actually off her, her chest or her stomach to finish, uh, and now it's three nothing. And Guerrera, who has been all over the field for the Rapid Lady Mustangs, is on the bench with some kind of, we think, an ankle uh, injury. Yeah, Coach LaRue is talking to her right now, and uh, looks like Menard just, uh, just like they looks like they finally, did they sub everybody, Matt? Is that they're subbing they're the few, not everyone. Not yet. Not they, everybody. They, they're still keeping that back line, that pretty veteran back line. Okay, yeah. There. And Kate's still in there, so. Yeah. And Bordelon. Bordelon is still in there, too. Yep, that's right. I think some of the seniors have gone out, but we'll see here. Kennedy's still there, number 15. Kate's in there. Mallory Brunet, number nine. I would That's think right. they'd finish out, huh? Looks like Miss Natalie Serio is in up at the top. Kate tries to take a shot from the way back. Natalie Serio to follow up. Ooh, very dangerous there, but that was a good job by Maddie Hatch. Ga uh, grabbing the ball, grabbing hold of the ball. Serio tried to get it away from her, but wasn't able to. Daigle may be... No, Daigle's still out there, right? She is, yep. Yeah. That's a uh, strong defender back there. She's well, got the leg for it. That makes sense. I mean, you got to leave the seniors in on their uh, – Well, that and 
You know, it is one strategy game. to make sure if you are up in the lead, and I, I don't know if you can attest to this, Nick, if you are, are ever up in the lead, you really like to keep that back line in. That back line, if they're strong and, and durable, it's it's safe to do so. But, I mean, I, you're the – you know this a lot more than I do. I, I'd probably say a game like this, if you have some defenders, you know, you may want to try to get them in with the experience. It's 3 nothing, um, you know, which, I mean, at that time we were looking at five minutes left. So, I mean, you may want to try to change them. Uh, not to mention you might be able to do a curtain call for your for your seniors. Yeah. You know, well. uh, even though this isn't their last, you know, their last game of the season. But, uh, and then you also have to worry about, you know, potential injuries as well. So, uh so that's just, but that's just things we. Well, that may be chances. something <laughs> he can do with the curtain call after we get. Well, we're in the the uh, downtime time yeah. frame. Yeah. There's a kick on shot on goal. Looks like from was that Kate? I believe that was Kate Scalfano. Off the right made the shot. Right yeah, foot. off the right foot. She um she must have heard me say that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she trying to prove you wrong yeah, now. It looks she like. Well, she must have heard me say that Polk had more shots than her, so now <laughs> she's. Kate tried to feed it in towards Broadnax and Serio, but they weren't able to get to the ball. Good defense from Luna. Well, kind of blowing my theory here. I thought Coach might, if they were going to do that curtain call, this would be the time to bring him, bring him out. I mean, there's no set sub times, right? No, no you can they just got to get up on the line. That's and correct. Yeah, the ball goes out of bounds. It's a, uh, that's an opportunity. Yep. Now, there is one strategy that some coaches will try to do is that they'll try to make multiple subs and to kind of burn the time, if you will. Um, now, we, as referees, they have been told if you are suspicious of a coach doing that, you will need to keep time uh, diligently to make sure that they are not uh, trying to time waste, if you will. And traditionally, that's more of a, you know, one one goal lead, you know, stuff like that, yeah. whenever that, that traditionally happens. But uh, but something like this. Yeah, no, for sure. You're right. So, like I said, we will keep it here uh, and and stay, you know, we're, we're going to stay on the air no matter what. I'm going to extend the time for the boys game to make sure we have everything. There's a shot on goal. Shot on Lord. goal from Kate Scalfano over Maddie Hatch into the goal. That was a fantastic shot by her. Another lefty kick. Making it four to nothing. Yeah, Lady Mustang just trying to clear the ball there, and uh, and Kate has been right in the middle there. And first touch shot score, uh, so unassisted. Uh, actually, have two of the four goals are unassisted, and they're uh, both of them are are by Kate. Just like I said, she's in the right place at the right time to win those balls and get the shots off. Two goals on senior night, and both of them on camera. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna be ecstatic <laughs> after this, I'm sure. Yeah, she may she may watch this on mute though with uh with her older brother. That's on right. The, I'm gonna uh, give her a hard goal. time on here. <laughs> I'm not sure we had the third goal on. <sighs> well, the third goal was actually Polk, so so you didn't you didn't miss that one on the uh, on senior night, right? <laughs> so and it looks like that's it. That's it. That's it. The final Good. whistle. The Lady Eagles win it four to nothing over the Lady Mustangs on senior night. And uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and then we'll be back as they do the introductions for, uh, for the ladies and the boys on their senior night. And then we will follow with the boys game after that. You're watching Menard Eagle Soccer from the Nest on 446 Sports. Wherever you are, you're there for a reason. You shouldn't have to make a trip to the branch to deposit a check. Skip the trip and use our mobile app to easily and securely deposit checks right from your phone, day or night, wherever you are, or whatever you're doing. Download our mobile app today.
Good evening, soccer fans, and welcome to the 2024 Eagle Senior Night for our girls and boys soccer players. Beginning the recognition of our Menard Eagle soccer team seniors is Mallory Elizabeth Brune, wearing number nine. She's being escorted by her mother, Des Brune. This is Mallory's first year playing on the Lady Eagles soccer team and is also on the HSN cheer team where she received service award, coaches award, Christian leadership award, and was NCAA All-American cheerleader this year. <laughs> Mallory has attended HSN for six years and is a member of the National Honor Society and it on the honor roll. She received the academic award for Algebra 2 and Art and is a member of the MAC Team, Beta Club, P Club, Student Ambassadors, and International Culture Club. One of Mallory's most memorable moments is joining the Lady Eagle soccer team this year and scoring a goal against Delta Charter. Future plans for Mallory are to attend LSU and pursue a job in interior design and architecture. Her favorite quote is, let all that you do be done in love, 1 Corinthians 16, 14. Mallory Elizabeth Brunet. Our next senior is Marley Isabel Daigle. She wears jersey number 29 and is being escorted by her parents, Mr. Huey and Miss Valerie Daigle. Marley has played four years with Lady Eagles soccer team and was breakout player of the year in the 10th grade. Marley was all district 10th and 11th grade and was defensive MVP and all Senwal 11th grade year. Marley's academic achievements and awards include the Jenny Smith Memorial Scholarship, Louisiana Girls State, Rotary Youth Leadership Award, Chemistry One Honors Award, and Academic List. She is a member of the MAC team, Key Club, and Catholic Daughters. For the Key Club, she has been reporter and a board member. For the Catholic Daughters, she is president this year and was historian her junior year. Marley's most memorable mo moments on the soccer team are heading the ball the wrong way many times and getting a nosebleed every season. Her future plans are to attend Louisiana Tech to study speech pathology and become a speech therapist. Marley's favorite quote is, not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. Mother Teresa. Marley Isabel Daigle. Next up is Kennedy Maria Johnson wearing number 15. She's being escorted by her mother, Miss Johnson. Kennedy has been a member of the HSM soccer team for the last three years and is a captain this year. She is also a member of the track team. Kennedy has maintained a 3.8 and above GPA during her time at HSM and was awarded English 1 award and placed fifth in the district rally in English 3. She has been a member of the International Culture Club, Junior Beta, Senior Beta, and National Honor Society. Kennedy's memorable moments at soccer are going to COPA for bus ride sophomore year and playing World Cup at practice with Coach Bailey. Kennedy's future plans are to attend Louisiana State University and major in psychology. Her favorite, her favorite quote is, for what's money without happiness or hard times without the people you love, though I'm not sure what about what's about to happen next, ask for, the strength, for strength from the Lord up above, J. Cole. Kennedy Maria Johnson. Next wearing number seven is Catherine Marie Scalpano. She is being escorted by her parents, Mr. Eddie and Miss Chris Scalpano. Kate has been a member of the Lady Eagles soccer team for six years. She was freshman all state and all district, eighth through 11th grade. She also received the Christian Leadership Award her junior year. Kate is an honor roll student and is a member of the International Culture Club. One of her most memorable moments on the soccer field was when her sister Anna and her played together and both scored and assisted each other's goals on Anna's senior night to win the game 2-0. Kate plans to t attend ULL or LSU and major in kinesiology. Kate's favorite quote is, be so good they can't ignore you. Steve Martin. Catherine Marie Scalpano. Leading off for the senior boys is Andrew Mark Cowart, 
wearing jersey number two. He is being escorted by his parents, Mr. Mark and Mrs. Rebecca Cowart. Andrew has played on the varsity soccer team for four years and was all districts his 10th and 11th grade year. He is a member of the HSN tennis team and was a state qualifier in 10th grade. Andrew has been a member of the track team for the past two years. Andrew has served on student council since 7th grade and is currently a member of the executive board. He is a member of the National Honor Society, Beta Club, Chess Club, and Mac Team. Andrew is also a secretary and treasurer of Key Club and a board member of the International Culture Club. Andrew's academic achievements include state certificate in 12th grade, LASC workshop in 12th grade, Rising Eagle Award in 11th grade, A and B honor roll, and a day with the doctors. One of Andrew's most memorable moments on the soccer field is when Sam Germanis had an astonishing goal in the Washita Christian game, 10th grade year. Andrew plans to attend Louisiana State University and major in biology. He hopes to pursue a career in medicine or dentistry. Andrew's favorite quote is, tables turn, bridges burn, you live and learn, Drake. Andrew Mark Cowart. Next senior is number 33, Sam Joseph Gormanis. He's being escorted by his parents, Miss Mimi Gormanis and Mr. Michael Gormanis. Sam has been on the HSM soccer team for four years and was all district the past two years. Sam made a 32 on ACT and makes good grades. He is a member of the International Culture Club, Chess Club, and Beta Club. One of Sam's most memorable moments on the soccer field is winning semifinals last year. His future plan is to attend University of Lafayette. Sam's favorite quote, for God hath not given me man a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and self-discipline. 2 Timothy 1-7. Sam Joseph Gormanis. Next senior player is Christian David Gooda, wearing number one. He is being escorted by his parents, Mr. Dustin Gooda and Miss Carrie Gooda. Christian has been a member of the soccer team for four years and was all districts 10th and 11th grade. He is also a member of the HSN track team. Christian's academic achievements include Citizenship Award, AB Honor Roll, and Algebra One Class Award. He is also a member of the Beta Club, Chess Club, and International Culture Club. Christian said his most memorable moments when playing soccer is making the quarterfinals sophomore year and making state finals his junior year. Christian's future plans are to attend LSU and major in biology. And his favorite quote is, you ain't gotta worry about me, cuh, Matt Ritchie. Happy birthday, Mr. Matt. Christian David Gooda. Next is J. Andrew Guillory. He's being escorted by his parents, Josh, Josh and Kristen Guillory. J. has been a member of the HSM varsity soccer team for four years and has been all district. He is on the HSM baseball team and was all district and is on the track team and has the indoor records for the 5, 55, 60, and 4 by 2. Jay is an honor roll student and member of the Key Club, International Culture Club, Music Ministry, and Art Club. Some of Jay's most memorable moments at soccer during the past four years are rondos with the senior group last year and hugging all my teammates after the state finals game. He had plans on attending the University of Louisiana at Lafayette to study biology. Jay's favorite quote is, may the fourth force be with you, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Jay Andrew Guillory. <laughs> Next senior is Ryan Edward Hicks. He's being escorted by his parents, Jared and Renee Hicks. Ryan has played on the boy varsity soccer team for six years and has been all district MVP, all Sim Law player of the year twice, all state offensive MVP, and upper 90 club. He is on the HSM football team and was named all state punter, all Sim Law, and all district kicker and punter. And on the bowling team has bowled a perfect 300 game. Also, Ryan is on the track team and was district champs in the 4x200. Ryan's academic achievements include AB honor roll, and Soaring Eagle Award. He is also a member of Beta Club, 
International Culture Club. Some of Ryan's most memorable moments are making it to the state finals this last year for the first time in program history and beating Ash the last two years. His future plans are to attend LSU and major in accounting. Ryan's favorite quote is, Are you working hard or hardly working? Ryan Edward Hicks. Next is Jad Raymond Maida, wearing number four. He is being escorted by his parents, Dr. Raymond and Miss Nancy Maida. Jad has been on the HSM soccer team for four years and is captain this year. He was first team all state, all district, and all semlaw. He was selected de defensive MVP, all semlaw, small schools MVP, breakout player of the year, and freshman all state. Jad is also on the bowling team and tennis team where he was state qualifier. Jad's academic achievements include A honor roll, Catholic Daughters Essay Award second place, Chase Michelle's scholarship, English Three Honors Award, Soaring Eagle Award, and Culture Club Award. He is a member of the MAC team, National Honor Society, Student Ambassadors, Beta Club, Chess Club, and International Culture Club, where he has been Vice President and President. Jad's future plans are to attend LSU, major in biology, and become a doctor. His favorite quote, you have a fork, spoon, and knife. All you have to do is finish your dinner. Najim Shalabi. Jad Raymond Maida. Gage Michael Ozer, wearing number zero, is our next senior. He is the son of Erica and Laramie Henry and Mr. Jason Ozer. He is being escorted tonight by his parents, Laramie and Erica Henry. Gage has been a member of the HSM soccer team for the past four years. He has been second team all district, second team all sim law, coaches award breakout player, and division four state runner up last year. He has also been a member of the HSM football team and was on the all district team and team captain. Gage has been on the AB honor roll and a member of the National Honor Society with a 3.5 GPA. He is also a member of the International Culture Club, Key Club, Spanish Club, and Student Ambassadors. Gage's memorable moments at soccer are making it to the state championship game and home playoff games. His future plans include attending either LSU or Louisiana Tech to major in electrical engineering. Gage's favorite quote is, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Psalm 23, 4. Gage Michael Ozer. Next senior wearing number 12 is Matthew Paul Ritchie II. He is being escorted by his parents, Matt and Lisa Ritchie. Matthew has been a member of varsity soccer for four years and was all district. He is also a member of the varsity tennis team where he was all district, most improved player, and was in regional and state playoffs. Matthew is a member of the National Honor Society, received service award, first place in district literary rally, English two, and participated in state literary rally in English two. He had all A's in the ninth grade. Matthew is an executive student council member and is treasurer. On the MAC team, class student council, member at large, key club, international culture club, chess club, senior beta club, member, junior beta club. One of Matthew's most memorable soccer moments is when the student section chanted his name as he entered the game in the semifinal match last year. Matthew's future plans are to attend LSU and major in finance. His favorite quote is, all things are possible if you believe. Mark 9, 23. Matthew Paul Ritchie. Our final senior for this evening is Cade Michael Cheer, wearing jersey number eight. Cade is being escorted by his father, Mr. Shear. This is Cade's first year to play for the HSM soccer team. He joined the team having previous playing experience playing varsity soccer. He's played ninth through twelfth grade. He, al he also has played tennis 10th through 12th grade and was a state qualifier 11th grade. He played baseball 9th and 11th and was first team all district and defensive MVP 11th. 
Paid to academic achievement includes AP Scholar, All-A Scholar, ACT 30 Plus Club, State Literary, State Literary Rally Qualifier in Advanced Math and Statistics, Advanced Math and Trigonometry and Chemistry. District, District Literary Rally winner in Chemistry and Advanced Math and tri Trigonometry. He was also Mu Alpha Theta Math Honor Society State President in 11th grade. Cade is a member of the MAC team and member of the chess club this year. Cade's most, most memorable m soccer moment was finding out he was eligible to play soccer after transferring to HSM. His favorite quote is, hard work beats talent when talent fails to work hard. Cade, Michael, cheer. We commend this group of athletes for their dedication to the sport of soccer and to their accomplishments on and off the field. Now let's all give a well-deserved round of applause to this year's HSM Eagles senior soccer players. This concludes our senior night presentation. We thank everyone for their attention this evening, and we wish good luck to all of our Holy Super Menard soccer seniors. This field will now be returned to the officials. Wherever you are, you're there for a reason. You shouldn't have to make a trip to the branch to deposit a check. Skip the trip and use our mobile app to easily and securely deposit checks right from your phone, day or night, wherever you are, or whatever you're doing. Download our mobile app today. For a lifetime of the best possible vision, Look to Wallace Eye Associates, where our tradition of eye care excellence in Senla spans nearly 40 years. From your next family eye exam to cataract and glaucoma evaluations, trust your vision to the experienced eye professionals at Wallace Eye Associates. Call Wallace Eye Associates today at 318-448-4488 to schedule your next eye evaluation. Buying car insurance for the first time can be overwhelming. Do you have enough coverage? Are you paying too much? Will someone be there for you when the unexpected happens? I'm Jason Hawk with Farm Bureau Insurance. You may think it's easier online, but why wait? We're here to help you make sure you're covered. When it comes to car insurance, we have the answers, and we may have rates that save you money. So talk to Hawk at 318-791-HAWK or online at talktohawk.com and let us help you protect your biggest investments. Time for a red, white, and cool summer event at Southern Air Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Right now, you can save on a new energy saving system. No money down, 0% interest, and no payments till June 2024. Call Southern Air Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing or visit us online. BK Distributors is proud to support high school athletics on 446 Sports. BK is the one-stop shop for trophies, banners, awards, letter jackets, and just about anything award-related. And now, welcome BK Apparel and BK Promotions to the family. For all your spirit apparel needs and anything you need to brand your business, when you think of anything you need with your name on it, think BK. Check them out on Facebook or at bkdistrib.com. BK Distributors, apparel and promotions in Pineville. Time for our red, white... 
Hi, I'm Kimberly Harrell, Certified Residential Appraiser. I am currently a leading provider of appraisal services for mortgage lending, employee relocation, estate planning, and community property settlements. My experience in real estate over the past 13 years and currently serving as president of the Greater Central Louisiana Realtors Association has given me a clear understanding of the real estate world and the ever-changing market we live in today. For any of your valuation needs, give me Kimberly Harrell a call. And welcome back, everybody, to the Eagle's Nest. Actually, y'all never left. We did, uh, but the camera was on for senior night, and now you can see the officials out at center field uh, getting ready for the start of the uh, nightcap tonight as the Eagles uh, will host the Mustangs on the boys' side of things. The girls, uh, the Lady Eagles, went in four to nothing in the, in the first of our doubleheader tonight. Great crowd in the stands for the Lady Eagles on their senior night and here to watch the boys uh, as they take on Rapids. Your thoughts in this game, Nick? I tell you, it's going to be one of those things to where uh, Rapids is going to try to defend well and counterattack. Um, that would be the key to the first key to, the, to victory for them. I do know that this is – we were talking about the, the cycles of – of how the players develop and the kids physically develop. I know this is probably one of the more physically developed teams that Coach LaRue has had in a number of years, so he's excited about that, and he thinks that physically, you know, they'll be able to compete against Menard. Uh, traditionally, Menard doesn't have that problem. They they usually have enough on the roster to where they just kind of, they, they just reload instead of, you know, instead of rebuild. But, uh, but that's going to be the key for them. Uh, Obviously, shutting down Matthew Hicks. I mean, uh, excuse me, Ryan, uh, Ryan Hicks yeah. is going to be is going to be a key uh, for them. And um, and I talked to to Coach Larue, and uh, he may have a little bit up his sleeve for for that. And uh, we'll see how Ryan adjusts to that. But uh, but then um, Menard's going to possess the ball. They're going to try to attack from from the outside. Uh, on the end of this, I call this the the Cracker Jack box of soccer fields <laughs> for high school because it's very narrow. So. Um, Sometimes that plays into the favor of uh, of the home team. I think uh, with with Menard, it's probably kind of hurts them a little bit because they're you know they have so many players that are strong and athletic. But uh, but then also defending the set pieces, the throw-ins. Ryan Hicks. I mean, there's not many schools in the in the state, much less the area, that could have your best player take your throw-ins. <laughs> you know, and and not not lo not skip a beat. So defending the throw-ins for. For Rapids, uh, you know, against uh, against Menard is going to be difficult as well. Well, you know, you said Matthew Hicks. You'll be calling his name out during baseball season as it comes up. So you'll have to throw in a Ryan in there. Yeah, that's right. Baseball that's right. Season. I'll have to I'll have to equal him out. Huh? Matthew, you saw this Menard Eagle uh, soccer team on on Saturday, and it's senior night for these guys. You went through a senior night. Kind of tell us what might be going through the mind of, uh, of the boys down on the field on, on this special night. Well, they're aware that this isn't their last game per se, but this is kind of an emotional moment um, for all our big seniors. As you, um, f with our starting roster, our seniors, most of them, actually all of our seniors are starting this game with a couple of uh, few that are not uh, going to be, or are their original starters are not going to be in uh, that Ian has usually put in. So, 
it is an emotional moment, but also a wonderful one. It's, they're going to probably play their heart out on this, but I will definitely guarantee that they're going to try to strike first and get a goal in as quick as they can. Try, try to set the tone, if you will. Well, and I thought I saw Menard won the toss, and they must have elected to defer – uh, to the to the second half, you see that in football all the time, Nick. I mean, what, what what's the rationale behind that? Well, in this situation, it was probably the wind, the wind direction. Usually in soccer, that's what that's the key. Um, you know, so it looks like um, it looks like here. You know, if, if Menard did win, they probably they probably elected to go a, against the wind uh, here. Uh, in, unless I mean, th- there's a lot of different reasons, but that's sometimes that's the case. Um, but I will tell you that uh, <laughs> they started out quick. Sam, speaking of senior, Sam Gramanis put pressure on the on on Rapides back line and won that won that uh, throw in up there. But this is what you're going to see with Menard tonight. You're going to see possession, um, you know, so they can try to break break the lines like that. Um, and and like I said, it'll be up to Rapides to to defend well and counterattack. Luke Griffin with a possible opportunity here hits it to Gormanis, but Gormanis can't make anything of it. Gormanis is going to pop it back out over to uh, our near side here to uh, Gu- uh, Gudo, Christian Gudo. So, Matthew, you mentioned all the seniors are getting the start tonight. Uh, if you have, uh, a- as time goes on, kind of point out for the fans who those seniors are. Our uh, big seniors, we have uh, our keeper, Gage Ozier. Gage Ozier, he, is do- he has done some fantastic work back um, in the um, goal area. And so he's, he's doing very good back there. Uh, right now, he's kind of relaxed and calm, but I have a feeling it may pick up tonight. Uh, our other seniors, Christian Goodo, number one. Number two, a- Andrew Cowart. Number four, Jad Maida. Number five, Ryan Hicks. Number eight, Cade Sherrier. And number 12, Matthew Ritchie. Number 15, Jay Guillory. Number 33, Sam Gormanis are our seniors. We do have Luke Griffin in there, who is not a senior, and Jude Maida, who is not a senior as well, but they are starters. And for any Rapids uh, fans that are maybe tuning in after they find out that it's on full four six sports or had been, uh, and they come in and uh, and and watch the game post game, uh, or those may know and and watching live, we'll be calling the the kids' names out. And there's the first goal of the night. Luke Griffin. Luke Griffin. Yeah, great run there uh, by by Ryan Hicks along the left side, left touch line there, across the ball back to the. Top of the 18, Luke Griffin with the one-touch finish uh, off the off the post there. Nothing Marler could really do with that one. And that was a good job by Menard, just opening up the field, get, get playing possession, like you were saying, Nick. They were playing that possession, trying to open up the field, find a good opportunity, and Ryan made sure that opportunity happened. And I was talking to Coach LaRue before the game, and one of the keys was not to give up an early goal and – Unfortunately, that that happened. So now they're now they're chasing the game, which is what you don't want to do against Menard. Cause you start chasing the game, and then you know all of a sudden Mar- Menard can can put two or three up very quickly. Yeah, that was within the first three minutes of the game. Uh, yeah. The Eagles strike first and lead one nothing over the Mustangs. Yeah, this a, a very experienced team here that uh, that Menard has, and uh, of course Rapids as well. I mean, that's one thing that. Like I said, coach was excited about, but uh, but re- but we all know that you know Menard is, what you know, state runner up. So they were they're definitely um, they're definitely uh, experienced on on all facets of the game. Yeah, they made history last year by getting all the way to the final game, and and actually the game ended in a tie, and they lost in uh, in the uh, the kicks afterwards. Yeah, um, uh, I would to be honest with you, I, I would I would say that Menard actually. Uh, you know, played played the better game. Uh, the thing about Episcopal is they had the experience, and they there's an offside here. They are, the center needs Our to center look referee hasn't point. seen, and he's still not looking. Nice job by the goalie. And it looks like they're finally getting it. Yeah. There. And unfortunate okay. there. What you want to do is you want to, you know, you want to try to avoid all that contact. I mean, there were three or four. You know, Rapids players around Sam there, and uh, and then obviously the keeper had to make a save. So, you know, unfortunately, hopefully that'll be the first one. Or, and look, we've all done it as referees. That's right. <laughs> yep. You know, especially when you're in the uh, in, in the moment. And I can tell you, the worst game I ever refereed was on this field. So, uh, so I'm not gonna <laughs> definitely say anything about anybody here. It's probably a good idea. <laughs> nice. Right. That's a great good point. through ball. <laughs> Down to uh, Guillory. Guillory makes a pass in or a shot in, and it goes into the back of the net. Very good work. 
Yeah, I, I'm, I think that that was uh, actually um, that was actually um, Griffin that played the through yeah. ball. I think so. What a what a great assist there! Guillory composed, puts the ball in the back of the net. I mean, we saw in the in the girls' game. You know, sometimes even though you have that one on one, it's not always the <laughs> the easiest thing to finish that. So yeah, Jake Guillory on the finish there, and this is not what what Rapids wanted to have happen. Two nothing Eagles, and I, I was going to bring that up. Uh, what you were talking about in terms of uh, it was a really nice setup on that on that goal. And, uh, and then making the right choice to be able to kick it away from him and into the far corner. Yeah, and there we have number nine from Rapids. We have, it looks like Galvan just trying a little too much there. He had two people open and just, you know, just trying a little much, which that's what's going to start happening. You're going to start pressing. They're going to start pressing. Um, and there's Hicks with the, with the ball, wins the ball very, very smooth there. Matt, can you see who who's that in the, who's that in the, on that left side? There? I think that's Coward over there okay. on the far side. Andrew gotcha. Coward. Yep, Andrew Coward. He he was the one who got uh, dinged for that offsides call. Gotcha. And in the introductions, I uh, I mentioned Nick McMano and Matthew Scafano, but I forgot to mention Daryl Campbell, <laughs> who is up here running the clock and uh, and and very knowledgeable, longtime coach, and I uh, believe your wife works out here too, right, Daryl? And uh, and so he's out. He, he's out uh, out here anyway. Uh, and so uh, you'll hear him in the background every once in a while with uh, some great information that we'll just repeat. And Marler steps up on that through ball there. It's kind of a uh, kind of uncharacteristic of Menard, but uh, but Jab was trying to trying to play that route one through ball quick. Andrew Cowart with the ball now on the outside. They're going to try to keep that possession up, like Nick was saying. So, and ooh, they give it away a little too easily there, trying to force it when they shouldn't be able to. That's one thing with Menard. They, they really need to open up the field, and they're doing it now. And I, I, they could be at a concern for being a little lackadaisical. There, there are two goals up, and like Nick was saying in the girls' game, that that gets a, that's a very tough area. It's kind of a gray area. It can go either way, so... Menard really does need to put another goal in the back of the net here to definitely kind of, I don't want to say assert a dominance, but <laughs> definitely make sure that they are a lot more comfortable. Well, that was not a kick that they wanted right there. I think he was trying to pass it and just put a little hook onto it. Yeah, it's uncharacteristic of Jad on that one as well. So looks like one of your golf shots, Nick. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Hicks with the ball driving it in. Passes it off to Coward on that far side. Coward's going to look to cross here. Let's see what he does. Passes it off to Hicks. Hicks then tries to make the cross down low. Gets it to Gormanis. Gormanis can't finish it. Pops back out to Griffin. Griffin tries to take the shot and not able to make a good contact on the ball. It's going to be a goal kick for the Mustangs. Yeah, I think um, Yeah, I think there might have been a little deflection there, but unfortunately. That's what I thought, too. And it looks like the center referee is signifying deflection. No, oh, no, they're they're agreeing with that. It's going to be a goal kick. Griffin's been active in his first uh, his first nine minutes. Uh, yeah, he's not game. he's not giving him enough pressure, or he's giving him a lot of pressure to not have them give up the ball. I mean, it's it's very impressive what he's doing. He's making sure they can't get rid of the ball. There's Jude Maida trying to make something happen. Passes it off to the brother, Jad Maida. And Menard just trying to open up this field, trying to see where is another good op uh, opportunity to attack. That's what we were talking about earlier, Tom, where the forwards, they like to run up the field, where that one, if he makes a check back run, you know, they, they, you know, they, they complete the pass very easily. Griffin with the ball again. He's going to pass it off to Gormanis. Gormanis is going to pass it up forward to Guillory. Guillory is going to look to cross it, tries to get around the defender. Not able to. Looks like that's Chavez. That's right. And then it looks like, uh, and here's where we're talking about having Hicks taking a throw. Looks like they were calling a deflection off of Menard. I don't, I don't know about that one. 
looks like it has clearly hit off Rapine's player's head, but maybe they're seeing something that I'm not. You yeah. know, but I mean, when you know, and that's, and I don't know if that's something that catches your attention, Matt. But I mean, to have it was not a, no, it was a goal kick. Mm-hmm. To to have um, to have Ryan Hicks, I mean, your your best player, to be able to to have that luxury of having him take the throw-ins, mm-hmm. you know, deep in your attack in third, you know, that's 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 different considering you know how how great of a finisher he is. Exactly. You know, you would think you would try to have someone else yeah. get that. Throw in. I know exactly what y'all are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Not. So, but I'll learn. You'll get there, Tom. Don't worry. We'll we'll teach you a thing or two. I do like the spacing that. You know, there's a lot more spacing going on here than we had in the in the girls' game. And and then that's. You know, basically because of Menard's possession, uh, the the way they possess the ball, um, you know, you have to play, you have to defend the whole field. So, Rappi, here's a counterattack for Rapides. And, and Evan can run. Looks no, like that's Gonzalez. not Evan. That's that is number 10. Oh, oh, wow. Number 10, Gonzalez, finishes it off with a wonderful assist from uh, Guillermo, Guillermo Galvan. Yeah, and that's exactly so what we – it's exactly what we talked about with them. We said that that, that was going to be the way they could score is a counterattack, and they won the ball here. They won possession off of off of Menard. Two two touches, plays the through ball, and uh, what a finish, uh, just technical finish there. So as a coach, uh, you know, Gage Ozer, the senior and goalie, he made the decision to go on the attack and to try to go get the ball, and then, you know, the uh, the, the shooter was able to kick it around him. Yeah, I mean, you know. you're, you're, you're coming. It's kind of like a free safety in football. You know, you're coming out. You want to cut the angle off. You know, if you're, um, you know, so where in soccer you're trying to come off your line, make the goal smaller. You know, so you can now you can come out. You know, uh, you know, too too quick, or you can come out too fast and 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 really kind of give up too much. But uh, I think he, I mean, he played it well. It was just a great finish, a very technical finish. Um, but like I said, as that as that free safety, you know, if they take that wrong angle. You know, a, a, a six-yard, seven-yard pass becomes a a ninety-nine-yard touchdown. So, uh, so that's basically what it is, Tom. You just try to, try to, try to. You know, it's an angles game. It's a it's a geometry thing, and 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 he just finished it. Uh, Gonzalez. Gonzalez, yeah. You know, great finish there. And this is um, man, a very we're entertaining thirteen yeah, thirteen minutes. Yeah, now this is an interesting game. Two to one. There we go. Eagles on top. And that was one of the things that that you know when I talked to Waylon, uh, he thought that um, he thought that Gonzalez and um, and um, and Burke Evan Burke he thought that they could run with their back line. Uh, that was one thing he was pretty confident in, uh, and, and that's one of those opportunities. And 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 Evans out here number seven, he uh, and it looks like he adjusted, put him at outside mid. He had him playing forward in the first in the first five minutes, five to seven minutes. Cowart with the ball now on the outside, looking to get it in, passes it off to Hicks. Hicks with the ball, trying to get around the defender. Defender, good defense by Jose Lucas Roman. That was very good work by the defender to keep uh, <coughs> Hicks on the outside and not able to get that ball crossed back in. And here we have Jad coming in for the for the height here on this uh, on this throw in. Tries to flick it back to have someone have an opportunity, not able to. Sherrier passes it off to Hicks. Ooh, nice. Uh, very good defense, you know. So I wonder if this is one of the things that Waylon had told you, Nick, that he's going to try to put someone on Hicks almost all the time yes. because he is – he usually makes a difference. But right now it looks like he's getting shut down. Well, the, and the, his debate was if he was going to man mark him. And it doesn't look like he's man marking him, but he's definitely – he's playing five in the back. And uh, and that was the thing. And and the the thing about Hicks though is, Hicks can go ten fifteen minutes without doing anything, and then all of a sudden have two moments that's of right. brilliance and two goals. He can pop so off. Yeah. So that's definitely the the thing. Um, and I will say that uh, that like I said, the the physically, he thought that this was the first year in a number of years that they could actually play with Rapids physically. I mean, play with Menard physically. Right. Ooh, that's a. Just a little bit of a miss from Guillory there. That's where, as a coach, you're saying use your left foot. <laughs> so can't take the can't take the coach out of me, unfortunately. 
No, so. but that adds to the broadcast. <laughs> and, and there, I mean, I was thinking he sh- number fourteen sure did take a lot of steps. Alex Martinez, yeah. I mean, he 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 ran up three mm-hmm. or four steps, stopped, and then ran up and took five. That's that sub- subjectivity as to where the yeah. ball went out, I guess. Yeah, traditionally they give you a yard forward, a yard behind of where the ball goes. Ooh, so there's a foul call against Ryan Hicks. Yeah, he, he he had to flick his back foot up to try to hit the ball, but it looked like it may have – it almost hit a – Attacker. I thought the ball. The hit, I thought he hit the ball and it hit the attacker in the face. You know, it's really one of those to where did the attacker put put his head in a dangerous position or did Hicks bring his foot in a dangerous position and the referee went with Hicks putting his foot in it. Although he doesn't have his arm up, so I don't, I don't know if he's calling. You know, and, uh, I dang. thought it was a dangerous play. Hicks yeah. put his foot in his mouth. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> so, which I. Some of us are pretty well known for putting our foot in our mouth. <laughs> yeah, some of us. Uh, uh, Mr. Campbell over here is laughing <laughs> at that one. <laughs> so that was a bit of a okay. He came over the back on that one. Yeah, I, I guess that goes to that time that uh, Matthew was uh, officiating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I was telling. I was telling your godfather here that yeah. uh, <laughs> that's right. That that was one of my worst. You messing moments. with my boy? That was one of my worst moments as a as a coach. And was, mine uh, as a referee. We were both having bad days. I think. Yeah, and um, and uh, I was definitely out of line with the the role that I played. Uh, hopefully, in being somewhat of a, a referee mentor as well. That's uh, right. And uh, but you know, one of those things about being competitors, especially when you when you coach a team that you know. I'm not saying other schools don't work for everything, but when when almost everything has to go perfect for for your team to compete, and you know you you tend to sometimes you know take it out on the parties that that uh, that that shouldn't it sh- shouldn't be taken out on. Let's put it that way. If it doesn't go your way, good li- good lesson for anybody out there who uh, who uh, thinks that it's always somebody else's fault. And here's Menard. I mean, they're gaining that. And what's going to happen is they're just, Tom, they're going to wear out this. It's going to be just like the girls' game. I mean, once you start chasing and you keep chasing and chasing, you just lose, you know, it it just takes a lot more energy, obviously. Shot from Cowart there from pretty far down. Had it low. So I don't know if you noticed, Nick, these these past few calls that the center referee has made for fouls, I think it's brought up the intensity a little bit of the game. We had a little bit of some jawing off and some – pushing here and there so I, th- I feel like the intensity is starting to kind of rise a little bit here yeah and I'm sure that I'm sure Rapide's goal probably you know <laughs> probably gave yeah. them probably gave them a little spark and, and and maybe made look at this maybe made uh that's right you know Burke a little Berg taking it down the line it's like Jad's trying to make something happen Ooh, comes off mm, the legs Gudo of there. Gudo yeah. yeah it's one where um you know, Jed may have gotten away with a little hold there, but uh, the Rapids did keep possession. Uh, the possession. Now we can see in the defensive uh, or in the midfield, Rapids, the Mustangs still have four defenders in the back here. Usually, what we see traditionally is that we'll have some of the defenders cheat up a little bit, just because you know shorten the field, you know, some more. Let's see what we have here, and you know that's one where. Um, that's one of those where you know you you have to worry about Menard's counterattack. That's right. And and and, and like I said, and it, and it doesn't just it w- and that's not just with Guillory and Sam. Like I said, if if Griffin or Hicks gets gets a hold of that ball, you know th- it's going to be difficult. Hicks with the ball now at midfield. He's going to try to make something occur. Andrew and Hicks, Andrew Coward and Hicks. Hicks finds an opening, goes down to the 18 inside the 18. He's going to cross it here. Crosses it over. Oh no! There was a wide open backside goal there that could have that could have occurred. Man, that's why they left five back, Matt. Right there. <laughs> right there. <laughs> <laughs> Is with the five defenders back, you yeah. still have that still play got there. Them, yeah. And um, they might need they might need six. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. And and you know something, Tom. You know, I mean, you you saw you know during the football season with Hicks. Is I mean. He's a great athlete. I mean, he's not just a, a technical soccer player. I mean, he's a great athlete, so he can he can change the game, uh, you know, in a moment for sure. 
So it looks like uh, Guillory is going back on defense because Christian Gudo got subbed out by Jackson Lucas. So Lucas 13 here right in front of us. So and he's uh, um, playing. So he's playing right mid now. Okay, That's here right. We go. Oh, here's, here's another Gonzalez one. Gonzalez again. Oh. Uh, okay. Good work by Oger. He he gets it to the outside to try to make sure that the ball doesn't go over his head or anything like that. So that's good. That's a good play by him. And that's the one there, Tom, where you see the keeper comes out, you know, uh, cuts off the angle. And uh, that's going to be Rapid's game tonight. I mean, they're going to try right. to counter, and 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 they're they're doing a great job with that. That was pretty much the exact same thing Gonzalez did on the goal. Yeah. They they almost tried to do the exact same play. Now the one thing, uh, talking to Coach Larue, the one thing his his back line, are, um, their discipline, they stay together. Uh, now not saying that Menard can't, you know, can't break them down, but that's one thing that they have not given up a lot of goals this year. And leading that charge looks like it's a uh, Christian Galvan. He is doing very good, doing all, calling out where players need to go, where the openings are. It's it's very impressive from Christian. Yeah. Oh. That was a very good steal from the Mustangs, number 17, Kevin Chavez. Good news about this game is that there's not going to be a whole lot of downtime after we get to the uh, the 38 or 40-minute mark. 38, right? Yeah. 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 That's Coward over there on the side. Gives it off to is it no it's not Hicks who's that on the, who was just on the ball oh, I'm trying to see that Griffin maybe yeah I believe that is Griffin yeah that's Griffin and that was a bit of a dangerous play there so that is going to be a call to foul that is going to be against Menard if you notice Tom there. <coughs> It looks like Griffin had kicked his leg too far up in the air. What we call that is a dangerous play. He's the defender put his leg in a dangerous position that could have been very detrimental to the Mustangs player. And so that is technically considered a foul. Now this does constitute an indirect free kick, but our center referee has not signified that information yet. And it looks like he won't. But that's okay. Menard gets it right back, gets it right back to Hicks. Hicks looks like he's on a roll. He's going down. He's getting past two defenders. Oh, wow, gets past three defenders. He puts some pressure, and the keeper comes out. Very good by uh, Lyndon Marler. Yeah, Lyndon Marler to take that in. And Rubio actually there to shield him off, to shield Hicks off when Marler came out. Uh, you know, the last, uh, the last touch Hicks had, it was actually, you know, the, the Rapids defender kicked it off of him, and, and he still was on the run. Sub here. Can you see who that is, Matt? I cannot. Coming in for Rapids? No, uh, no, coming in for, for Menard. Menard I guess like. I don't know why they're not allowing it. You know, and this is, I mean, 24 minutes into this game. I, I think, I think, you know, obviously, you know, um, uh, Rapids is going to be, you know, disappointed they give up two goals, but the way they came back and really, you know, the, the goal they scored and the, the second chance they had, I mean, they, they're probably feeling pretty good right now. Oh, yeah. Rap yeah. If I'm a Rapids player, I definitely would. I'd be feeling a little more pressure. Let's let's give them some more pressure and see what we can do to make a play happen and possibly get more goals in. Griffin with the ball passes it off to uh, Guillory. Guillory trying to do something and I'm not able to. Pa we'll pass it back to uh, Jude Maida, Jude Maida to Jad. They open the field. There, right yep, there, there it is. That's that opening that field. It's that possession that we were talking about earlier. Now they're starting to concentrate back on it like they were in the first part of the first half. You know, but once you get into where, you know, Rapids is, you know, I mean, they're they're playing seven, eight back. Oh, yeah, they've so got a lot of people. It's hard to break that defense. That's right. So, and they'll be, they'll be they'll be happy with just letting Menard knock the ball around, you know, midfield mid, mid, midfield third to defensive third, and every once in a while get their breakout. Yep. That's right. This is what we call good old Italian soccer, Tom. <laughs> you play solid defense and counterattack. So, uh, and it 
only takes one mistake. Oh, nice little physical guy. It's a good physical match. <laughs> Sam sticks with the ball, though, and dumps it off. Looks like Menard's trying to do a little bit of a reset here, trying to reopen up the field. Rapids is smart to not waste too much of their energy, too. They're just kind of jogging to the ball. Yeah, and one thing they're gonna have to and and they're gonna you're gonna have to see the Menard is there's too many times that Jude is getting the ball facing his own back line. Mm -hmm. If he if he gets the ball, I mean I even maybe even just facing the sideline. You know, if he gets it, you know that way he can turn. But too many times he's getting the ball and playing it right back to his back line, and he's not connected into the into the you know midfield line. How big is the communication there? I mean, uh, it's all thirteen. You know, had somebody come in behind him and like he didn't know it, yeah. and they stole the ball. I mean, somebody should have been yelling at him, huh? Yes, I mean, it's all communication, especially, you know, when people come from behind you. Um, you know, that's that's a benefit to, 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 to the game. There's, you know, there's usually somebody, you know, who could see all around you. So, yes, communication is key. Is there a key word that y'all come up with to yell mm -hmm. to make it like one word? Man on. Man on, that's usually, usually the one. You know, uh, turn. If there's nobody behind you, you know, turn is, I mean, it's um, one of the things that we used to run into with our players is, you know, I would just, in, in the possession drills that we would do, uh, that's all you could say is man on or turn, man on or turn. You couldn't say the names because if, if the ball's going to Tom and I'm saying Tom, 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 well, you already know your name. Yeah. So it's like, no, you turn, you know, or, or man on. And uh, you'd be surprised how many times these guys are sitting here talking, you know, talking, you know, saying each other's names, unfortunately. That's Griffin again trying Dad, to make something happen. Dad is the quarterback back there. He's he's telling those dudes most of the time where to play the ball to. Yeah, and and and, it, and he should because I mean he's the last line of fence. He sees the whole field. Right. I mean the goalkeeper obviously is the is the you know is is another one that could communicate real well. Um, but you know one of the things is. But uh, you get so far away from the goalkeeper. That that's right. You that's know. right. So and and the person who plays the ball too. I mean, the person who plays the ball to to your teammate, you can tell them because you're seeing, you know, the ball's going to them. I mean, unless you get knocked down, you know, you could also tell them what to do. That's a great. Ooh, yep. Here we go. Galvan trying to make something happen. Passes it off. Here. To Chavez. Chavez passes it to Gonzalez, who had the goal earlier today. Yeah, Mata here. They call him Chucho, number twenty-eight. <laughs> He's one seems like he's been at Rapids for ten years. <laughs> <laughs> so you were saying uh, when the girls were playing that you worked with a couple of the uh, of the parents. Yeah, yeah, one one couple. Uh, you know, their daughter plays. This is her first year playing, and uh, and uh, she was uh, uh, Mariana, the mom, was uh, was given a, a Mr. Buddy heater, <laughs> propane <laughs> heater, because <laughs> they're not too fond of the cold. Um, but yeah, I mean. Um, and then her, her dad, a uh, marathon, is uh, is a guy who's you know coworker of ours that um, that, that does a little bit of everything uh, for us. Uh, Mariana's our production uh, manager at uh, at Doug Young Nursery, and uh, and you you know hopefully our uh, some of our listeners will go and see some of the the product that she produces and 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 the the nursery how. Uh, how a marathon, you know, builds a lot of stuff out there and, 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 and does a really good job for us. Yeah, we definitely encourage everybody who's uh, what tuning a in. Opportunity here. Oh, there it is. Very good by Ryan Hicks. He just drove it right through the defenders. They really couldn't pick him up too well. And that was a great ball from Jude as well. Um, I mean, it's that's just – I mean, I hate to say it. That's just not fair sometimes. I mean, <laughs> when you – I mean – Literally, he's he's on the sideline and he's he's standing there. I mean, he's standing there, and you you just you you just don't look at him for you know five ten seconds, and that's what happens. But it did take a great ball from uh, I think it was Jude to play that ball. Yes, you know, yeah, Jude had a I mean, ball. perfectly weighted pass. You know, away from the defender. You know, not far enough for the for the keeper to come out and make a play. So um, so yeah, great a great goal there by by Menard. Number 11, Austin Siebenacher, is in for Andrew Cowart. That seemed to take away a lot of steam from Rapids. And it looks like Ryan's going to push him again. 
Yeah. They're going to keep up the pressure. I don't think they like that they got scored against on senior night. <laughs> you know, and and to be honest with you, um, I mean Hicks is one of those players that you can you can let him kind of do his thing. You know, like right now, how he's kind of walking a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, you can let him do that because the four or five moments of brilliance you're going to get from him, you know, uh, pay off. I mean, it's kind of like, I mean, I know this is a big comparison, but it's kind of like Cristiano Ronaldo. Mm -hmm. I mean, or, or um, you know, one of my favorite players was uh, Roberto Baggio, uh, uh, Baggio from years yeah. ago. Where um, Looks like that ball was <laughs> staying in. Mm. Uh, AR's over here. I don't know if he had his flag up. I don't know if he was. I don't know what he was trying to tell everybody. He was, was a little slow on it. I wonder if there wasn't a hand. I wonder if there wasn't a handball there. That's what I was wondering too. Um, bit of oh a no trip, trip inside the box, but the referee said referee no. Referee said there. no. Yeah. yeah, he said told Gormanis to get back up. Well, you know, you were talking about Hicks. You know, he was the fastest player on the football team. Yeah, and I would venture to say he's probably the fastest player out here. On the soccer it's field. pretty close. I don't know. It was until the uh, uh, one of the balls, balls in. Out late. Uh, when the uh, sophomore was the first three to play, he was there to play. You know, that's when they play the ball short there. They play the ball short there, try to get it back to Hicks, and, you know, the, the Rapids defender stepped in well and, uh, and won the ball from him, and, when Menard gained possession back, they decided to drop it back to just kind of open it up and see what we have. But see, this is one of those situations. You have Guillory here, number 15, on the on the wing here, who's your outside back, and he's able to attack because you just don't have the the numbers forward for Rapids, and uh, with, and with good reason. Well, and, you know, it be kind of rare to have an offsides with that many defenders back. <laughs> it would, it yeah, would for right, sure. Right. You know, I'm not saying it can't happen, but. Yeah. There's also a you know whenever you have you know that many defenders back and you're looking I mean it's where Gramanis needs to kind of he he needs to move laterally a little more instead of vertical instead movement of vertical. he needs to move laterally right. to to try to you know at, at least open up space because you know at least occupy although I guess I guess if he's standing in the middle there the, he might you know might be trying to occupy both the center backs but um. But I would like a little bit more movement out of him, uh, especially with the work rate that he that he offers. Jesus Mata is out. A substitution came in for Rapids, and Chris Harros is in. Three to one Eagles over the Mustangs on senior night here at the Eagles Nest. The thirty fourth minute. And you're watching. Menard Eagle Soccer on 446 Sports. Andrew Cowart coming in for Sam Gormanis. And Nick was talking about it a little bit earlier, but we are grateful to all of our sponsors. You can notice Valex Federal Credit Union down in the bottom right. They are our uh, annual sponsor, and, it, and it's their second year to be our title sponsor for 446 Sports. So you you won't see that logo move anywhere. You'll also see all of the logos in the upper right-hand corner of all of our uh, folks who are sponsoring with us. And then we just added Doug Young Nursery as a sponsorship you heard Nick talk about earlier. And um, we've got another sponsor that will be joining us that we'll ha hopefully have a commercial for uh, uh, in you probably next week or maybe even tomorrow night during the, uh, the Lady Eagles basketball game. We'll announce that tomorrow. That was a great throw there. Great by pass. Oh, wow. It was a little bouncing around, and it looks like Chad Mato was the one who put it to the back of the net. Yeah, the ball bounced around there a good bit, and, it, and Rapides wasn't able to fully clear it out. Yeah, unassisted there. Um, it looks like uh, J Jad actually had a, I mean, a great flick across, and then when Rapides off the initial throw in, and then when Rapides – went to clear the ball ends up back at his feet and he finishes it off right there and Marler really none he could do there um, you know um, Menard at coming into this game they were the number one team in the power ratings um, with That's 10 right. two and three record and two and0 oh in district and looks like they might be you know 
going to the three at the three and zero district here. Game's not over yet. We still have a whole another half to play. <laughs> yeah. We do. You never know. Four to one, but y- you can almost see, uh, you know, uh, like y'all talked about earlier, just uh, Rapids kind of wearing down a little bit. Yeah, and then um, Rapids was number eighteen at the with six three and two record, and one and zero in district. Uh, that one win coming against uh, Grace last week and. Rapids, unfortunately, is they have not been able to play a lot of games um, because of their field conditions, and uh, and they had to postpone a couple games because of this the weather to pass this past week. So um, let's talk about that a little bit, Nick, in terms of the district, because you start talking about Rapids and Grace. These are not the teams that uh, that we're playing in district in basketball or football or or baseball. Yeah, uh, basically what what we do is in soccer we have four divisions. There's no split. Um, everybody plays everybody. There um, there are four 32 uh, team brackets at the end of the at the end of the season. Um, like I said, select, not select. It's all together. Uh, so and then what they do is they they just go by the enrollment. You know, pretty much kind of divided by four. Um, you know, obviously Division One is the largest largest schools and and. I think last I checked, I think Division One has, you know, rated 41 schools. I think Division Two has uh, like 43 schools. Division Three, I think, is the smallest. Actually, may have 39 schools, and then Division Four. I think we were at, in Division Four. We were at like 42 schools, and I, I mean, you'd have to double check me on that. But that's basically it. There's no, we don't split off into into five. You know, actually, Danny's showing me here. There's 43 in this division, and. Uh, we don't split off and and play seven state champ. We know there's not seven state champions. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, uh, to be honest with you, um, I, I wouldn't want it that way. Uh, and I'm at one of the smallest schools. So I, I say I'm I'm not there anymore, but I'm still involved with the program. We have 115 kids at Grace, and we're in the same district as Menard, who has over 250. Um, so, but that's just the way it is. And you know, fortunately, last year. Uh, our boys were able to upset Menard and win district, uh, and 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 our girls have been competitive. So, um, so you know, it's just, it just it really just depends on who's on your roster and and and, and how well they can compete. And uh, and you know, obviously, uh, sometimes the largest schools aren't always the best. Um, but but in our case here, Menard has done really well over the years in boy uh, boys soccer, and that's kind of the kind of the synopsis of it. We don't we don't. Um, we don't have A, B, or C. Uh, we don't have 5A, 4A, 3A, uh, 1A, like like they do in the other sports. Ryan Hicks with the ball coming down the sideline. He's got an opportunity here. Good they defense. are swarming Ryan right down there in that far side. They do not want him to get a pass <laughs> off or to get through at all. There was some great tackling as well from the Rapids defenders. Well, it won't be long till we get to halftime because we're now at the uh, the downtime portion. Yeah, we're 30, 39th minute here, thirty eight twenty into the game. Uh, he may he may give a few seconds for for the four of well five goals, but um, probably unlikely. It was a good job oh. to keep the ball in play there. That's thirteen. That's Lucas. That was Lucas. Shot, yes. Damn. Uh, He's good. looking at his watch. So the Eagles lead it four to one, and when the middle official decides to blow the whistle and call this first half to a close, uh, we'll have about a ten-minute halftime. We're just going to have the camera on the field, and uh, just um, a little downtime in, in terms of uh, voices. You won't be hearing any, and unfortunately, I don't have the music I can play. But uh, but it'll it'll be just on the field. So. Give us about 10 minutes, and then you can come back, and we'll uh, we'll have the kickoff for the second half in the final 40 minutes. Howard on the ball now. They moved him up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Strong defense from Lucas Ramon, number 11 for Rapids. For a little he's, – he's pretty small, too. For a small guy, he is doing some very good defense. That was good oh. pressure from Jad Maida trying to keep the ball alive inside the box. Okay. Looks like Menard's wanting to go for a reset here, trying to pass it out and around to open up the field, open up the box a little more. 
again, it was just brought to my attention that with the Powell boys win over Grace today, uh, this evening, that Coach Greg Como has, uh, now has 250 career victories oh, as a, as a high him. school coach. Good for Greg. So uh, congratulations, Greg. I wish you would have done it to a different opponent, but <laughs> congratulations on that. Uh, Well-deserved. Um, you know, has really brought some stability. Has really brought some stability to the. Oh, that should be. He's still got possession of the ball. Griffin is uh, still on the ball. Trapeze with the possibility here. Yeah, we're Good. 40 seconds into this. 40 seconds over in the, ex the stoppage time here for this first half. So he is gonna he is gonna try to make up for the. For the five goals here. And it's his discretion. Maida, wow, Jude, Jad Maida passes it all the way out to Ryan Hicks on the far side. Ryan Hicks with the ball, crosses it in. Lucas is there, heads it over, and there's Marler there for the save. Fantastic save from Marler. Yeah, great, anticipating that. Great positioning there. You know, that's definitely one <laughs> where, as a Rappies coach, I'm like, blow the whistle, blow the whistle. <laughs> <laughs> So Looks like Lucas is trying to do it again. Yeah. Not able to do so. Gets pushed off the ball. Jude Maida passes it out. And so if he's got a like kick on goal and they blow the whistle, is it dead even if the ball goes into the net? That ball has not crossed the line. It is, It is. yes. Okay. It will be dead. Yeah. But as a referee, you generally try to avoid That's that right. situation. That's, right. That's going to cause a lot of problems. Yeah, it's not like football or basketball where no you know, and one. That's right. So. Burke with the ball here for Rapides, passes it into the middle to Galvan. Galvan gets it through, one defender. He's got a few more to beat, but it looks like Matthew Ritchie's there to break it up. There's the halftime. There it is. So the Eagles take a 4-1 to one lead into the half, and uh, we got about 10 minutes. We'll run a couple of commercials, and then we'll be back for the start <laughs> of the second <laughs> half. You're watching Menard Eagle Soccer on Full Four Six Sports. Our mobile banking app is changing the way we bank. Things are getting easier, transactions are getting safer, and you have access 24 seven. All the functionality of banking you're used to made easier to use anywhere, anytime, and more secure than ever. Simple, seamless, safe. Download our mobile app today. For a lifetime of the best possible vision, look to Wallace Eye Associates, where our tradition of eye care excellence in Senla spans nearly 40 years. From your next family eye exam to cataract and glaucoma evaluations, trust your vision to the experienced eye professionals at Wallace Eye Associates. Call Wallace Eye Associates today at 318-448-4488 to schedule your next eye evaluation. and cool summer event at Southern Air Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Right now, you can save on a new energy saving system. No money down, 0% interest, and no payments till June 2024. Call Southern Air Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing or visit us online. BK Distributors is proud to support high school athletics on 446 Sports. BK is the one-stop shop for trophies, banners, awards, letter jackets, and just about anything award-related. And now, welcome BK Apparel and BK Promotions to the family. For all your spirit apparel needs and anything you need to brand your business, when you think of anything you need with your name on it, think BK. Check them out on Facebook or at bkdistrib.com. BK Distributors, apparel and promotions in Pineville.
And we're back live at the Eagles Nest in Alexandria, Louisiana, the home of the Holy Savior Menard Eagles taking on Rapids. They will switch sides, and, and, uh, and, and Menard will be moving right to left, Rapids left to right. We'll set the – y'all saw the clock was set for another 40 minutes of play. The Eagles lead by 3-4 to 1. You know, uh, Nick and Matt, give us kind of a recap as we get ready to start this second half of what we saw in the first. I'll give the Rapids side. I think, uh, like I said, for the first 15, 20 minutes, I mean, competitive, uh, gave themselves an opportunity, and uh, and unfortunately just uh, – um, just a couple of counterattacks and uh, and really, you know, cost them. Matt, what you think about on Menard's side? Menard's side, their their possession is really helping them open up the field. When they open up that field, they're able to find those holes and gaps inside the Rapids defense, and then they, they take that opportunity. They do not hesitate. They are attacking it. Now they did get a lackadaisical, a little lackadaisical after that second goal that they had gotten, but then they they got their heads right where they needed to, and so they're starting to concentrate on making sure that they are going to. You know, play more possession, open up the field, score more goals. There's wow. Ryan with wow. a beautiful shot. Wow. Ryan with a beautiful shot from way far back, a little, a little over 20 yards. And <laughs> that was a bullet. That was. He, he's got no joke. That was like what Nick was saying in our first half. <laughs> he can make a massive change. He can change it on a dime if he needs to. That was a great play by the goalie for Rapids. I mean, that ball was in the net if he's not there. Quick corner here. Defended by the Rapids, and that's one of the things. <laughs> now we were talking about um, talking about shin guards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, of course, I mean, Ryan either has you know six or eight inch shin guards because yeah. he's he's ten yeah. foot tall, <laughs> <laughs> or he has three inch shin guards yeah. because he's you know six foot tall. And I'm gonna go with the latter there, yeah, Matt. What do you think? I would agree with that uh, assessment as well. Those are sawed off <laughs> shin guards. Yeah. <laughs> It's probably one shin guard cut in half, to be honest with you. Yeah, but that's that's technically, like. all you have to do is have s what, what there you technically call a shin guard There technically is on. a regulation on how big they are supposed to be, to, to an extent. Um, but that that's kind of where <laughs> the that players like to muddy the rules a little bit. Could that be something that could come back to, to bite him, like in a major playoff game? It actually could. Yeah. The other, we've seen is it that something the other coach would go – Hey, hey, check that guy's shin That's exactly – we've seen it before, actually. Yes, that's happened Where before. Yeah. yeah, so and we, heck, we've seen it in playoff games um, where a jersey – there was a illegal jerseys, and a team had been playing the entire regular season. Right in the playoff match, the opposing coach was like, hey, those aren't regulation jer jerseys. And so, sure enough, they were not. So, the players had to get completely new jerseys right in the middle of playoffs. So, in here. something like that – he would he would need to have another set of shin, gl oh, <laughs> shin sure. guards in his bag, in case somebody calls him out on it. Yeah, or you go to the or you one go of the to players. One of the backup <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I say. Go to the one of the players. That's <laughs> usually what I would have done. Yeah. They're all they'd all be taking them off. <laughs> that's mine. exactly. Yeah. Use mine. But, um, and I don't know uh, Saturday. Like I said, I didn't get a chance to watch a lot of the, the boys game on Saturday, but. What, has Hicks been on this left side for for the most uh, for, for you know, yes so during Saturday's game he was and during the uh, and during today so far he's been primarily on the left side of the field. You know, when we're, with Griffin's work rate in the middle, I mean, I could uh, you know it's once again you have that luxury of having him out here, and then you have you know Jude right behind in that number six position, that defensive center mid position, so. We saw some fantastic communication there with Ryan mm -hmm. Hicks and Giordano. Ryan was telling Giordano to overlap him, and sure enough, he did, and he tried to make a play going forward, but Giordano just couldn't make it happen. Richie with the ball, passing it off to Giordano. Giordano to Hicks, Hicks to Giordano. Giordano's going to take it into the middle. Maybe, okay, they're going to try to do possible reset, hitting it to Jude Maida. Jude Maida. Passes it on oh forward to Griffin. Griffin to Siebenacher. The yeah. They're kind of forgetting that Ryan was there. Went to five hole there on that turn for the Rapids player. Nice play there by, Gonzalez. by Aaron Gonzalez. He's had a good game. He is. He had that goal earlier in the first half, and it made it look real good. Ryan Hicks with an opportunity here. Oh. Drives it in, hits it to the outside. He's going to make a shot. It goes just wide of the goal. And I'm going to take this opportunity right now to talk about Aaron, Hernan uh, Aaron Gonzalez. He, you know, of course, he scored the goal here. He's number 10 for Rapids. He did not make the Sinlaw Rush team. And, uh, really? 
Yeah, and I think it's very unfortunate. And I think if there's people involved with the Rush program that could could watch him now and see him, because you know you have a you have a two day tryout. Mm -hmm. You know, he probably didn't know many people there, and you j it, it's hard to go by you know a two day tryout. So hopefully somebody will be watching this broadcast and see him. He's a quality player, and he could really he could really help uh, that that team and that program right now. Well, if somebody's tuning in uh, that knows anybody who uh, is coaching in that area, you know, reach out to them and tell them about them and tell them where they can find the broadcast, either yeah. on Facebook or YouTube. Gonzalez here with an opportunity on the outside, tries to cross it in, but Richie's there to make the block. They will be going out for a corner kick for Rapid. I believe this is their first corner of the game. Yeah, I think so as well. Rapid's trying to coordinate what they're going to do for this set piece for this corner kick. They don't have many when they play five or six back. Yeah, it's hard to. Here's the kick in. Good air time. Gonzalez tries to take a shot, but not able to do so. Mata is there to grab it for Rapids. Ooh, a handling call off of Mata. Yeah, that ball did touch up, and it hit right onto his hand. So Jad Mata will be taking the kick. The free kick here. He's waiting for his team to get down the field. Wanted to use the momentum, but he's going to just do a quick pass off to the brother, Jude Maida. And this is a possession that just, I mean, starts to really wear on the opponent. I mean, when you're, like I said, I've said it before, when you're chasing the ball, and, uh, and although you're not running full speed, but you're just constantly moving, constantly chasing. It looks like uh, it looks like Rapid's just going to concede this, you know, this uh, possession right now, um, and, and wait for that. Oh, here we go. There's the mess up, and and sometimes that happens with those uh, possession things. You have someone who may mess up, or and that light pressure will sometimes just do the trick. And now Menard's on the recovery phase. We can kind of see them rushing it, and now they've just reset. Jad's going to go for the long ball, hits it far to Ryan Hicks, who's wide open down the left side of the field, not able to get around to the ball. He finally gets it, and he's getting through defenders. Here comes the cross. Good defense from number 11, Jose Lucas Roman. I'm telling you, that guy's size, Lucas Roman, <laughs> is <laughs> tiny, but, man, he is very sharp on the ball. Yeah. He is attacking. He, he does not care if he's tiny. He's going after that ball. Yeah, he's he's, he's ever bit of probably five foot two, five foot three. Yeah, that's about and, what I would say. And But plays like he's six foot. Fantastic uh, hit by Jude Maida with the corner kick and with Jad trying to knock it in. It's the brother duo there. Oh, that's a nice play there by Rapids. Keep it in. Jad Maida here with a possible cross. Hits it low. Gormanis oh. is there. Takes the shot but goes high and wide. That's a field goal. <laughs> yeah, he's leaning back a little much. That's one as a... <laughs> As a as coach, a, as a coach, and as a as get a, over the ball. As a teammate, you're telling him, "Hey, hey, boys, the crowd will let you know if the ball ends up in the back of the net. You don't have to see it. <laughs> <coughs> you don't have to see it. They'll let you know. Yeah. So they'll also let you know whenever it goes all the way over. <laughs> but um, but yeah, just and I've I've definitely been there as well as a player. Just get a little excited, try to see what's about to happen. Yeah, I guess it really doesn't matter what sport you're talking about. It's all about keeping your eye on the ball. Yeah. You got to keep your eye on the ball through a golf swing, through a baseball swing, tennis swing, tennis swing, yeah. pickleball swing, <laughs> all the swings. Another possible opportunity from Ryan Hicks. He's going to try to do some fancy footwork, but he'll dump it off to Jude Mayer, who's open in the field. He's going to take a long shot, but number 15 for Rapids, Eduardo Rubio, is there to stop the play. Jude trying to get into action there, trying to. He doesn't want to be left out. That's right. I think he's a sophomore, right? I Darryl? believe so. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, we always talk about young men of size kind of migrates this way. He normally plays as the attacking midfielder or center midfield, and then just because of his left foot, just kind of migrates this way. It's where he's comfortable. Yeah, and, and once again, I mean, you're going to give him that 
you're going to give him that freedom because, like I said, you have, you know, um, you have, you know, Jude there behind him. You have what Luke in the Luke that's 36. So mm-hmm. yeah, Luke Griffin who's done well in the middle and and number 11 now, which is uh, Siebenacher. Siebenacher has done. So I mean, you know, you're not losing you're not losing anything defensively. You know, with him being out here. And Giordano with a cross here hits it high. That's dangerous. That Ooh. is very dangerous. Oh. It comes off and oh, just wide, barely hits the goal, almost. Yeah, wow, this is wide left. So I find that interesting. Thirty-two. That was uh, Giordano, Giordano, right? Yep. He's out of bounds, and then comes in. You know, in any other sport, you have to reestablish yourself with both feet in bounds before you touch the ball. Is it the same? Nope. No, you don't have to. As long as the ball stays in bounds, that's the important thing. You can be out of bounds all day if you mm-hmm. want to. So you could run up down the sideline out of bounds, kicking the ball inbound. That's right. And we and it happens many a times. And the but the difference in soccer, Tom, compared to football and basketball in particular, is in basketball if the ball goes over the line, mm-hmm. as long as you left your feet to right. you know, to save it inbounds, it's still live. Where in soccer the plane goes all the way up. So the line goes all the way up. So as soon as it crosses in the air, it crosses the whole ball, crosses the line, it's out. Okay. So it's not, you know, football where you can make the catch but have your feet down, the ball right. being out of bounds. It, it's not like that in soccer. When that ball crosses the line in the air, here's a shot here. Good shot from Steven Ocker from pretty far back. That was almost 30 yards. Is is It, it crosses. So that's the, that's the difference in soccer compared to, to basketball and football are the main two that I – you know that I would I would say, yeah. So I mean, even baseball, if it's rolling on the line, it's not out. That's right. Now it looks like we're actually starting to see Menard become a little more defensive mindset. Really, only Gormanis is up on the top here. They're wanting to keep this lead, but still kind of push if they need to take this take the space if they have the ability to do so. Is that a clock killing? <laughs> yeah, potentially. They definitely don't want Rafiz to score again. Young man from Rapids trying to protect himself in that situation. So, wanted to point out that Chris Harris from uh, from Rapids, since he's come in, he's he's really done well. Number twelve. Yes, he's yeah. starting to make a lot of good through balls and plays towards Gonzalez. Really, I've noticed. Yeah, and it looks like. Uh, Jose Lucas Ramon, number eleven, but he he was <laughs> he just had his hands over his head. Looks like he's trying to. Looks like uh, Gramanis came from an offside position, but you know he was kind of close. So I wonder if Hicks is kind of kind of wearing him down over him back here on this uh, Rapids' his right side, Menard's left. Galvan making plays happen in the middle. He's passing it around, getting it to Mata, and Mata. We lost with Siebenacher. So Siebenacher is going to hit it off to Hicks. Hicks is going to try to drive it down the line, try to get through Lucas Roman, and he's just going to beat him with speed. Oh. He hits it right past him. Hicks passes oh. it to the middle. Oh. There's Gormanis. Gormanis is in there. Great tackling by the Rapids defenders. Yeah, I think that's John Hernandez. Number two, John Hernandez was a, was a great slide tackle there to to save a, a, a goal scoring opportunity, to finish a goal scoring opportunity, cut off a goal scoring opportunity by Gormanis. But what a run by Hicks, and then you know to have the the wherewithal to to cross it over to Gramanis, who who delayed his run, and made you know a lot of guys will will make that run and they'll overrun that ball. He delayed it, so it was more of a drop back pass. Yeah, you could see the burst of speed that Hicks had. You know, he right neck, you know, running side by side, and then he kicks it just forward, knowing he's going to outrace him to the ball. Yeah, I was listening during the senior night where, you know, it sounds like he's going to, to LSU. I was wondering if he was going to, you know, try to play at the next level, try to play soccer at the next level. He's right. he's, he's definitely one that has the ability and, you know. Oh, he capable, has the ability to do so capable. for sure. And, uh, and the thing that, you know, the thing about college soccer compared to high school is, um, yeah, I mean, the technical ability you have to have, but the physicality, the size. Shot from oh Griffin wow. here. Pretty yeah. far off target, I haven't. But the physicality, I mean, everybody, you know, if they're 5'11 to 6'3, they can all run. They all possess the ball really well. And even at the, the the NAIA level with LCU and LSUA, I, mean, I encourage you to go watch 
those games and just see, you know, how how athletic um, these players are, both on the men and the women's side, and, and very two successful programs we have here locally at the college level. Hicks again here. Oh, that's a little hold. He still broke through and still had possession of the ball, was potentially making a play, but I, I, it looks like he may have said something to the referee and said, hey, come on, man. <laughs> I was getting <laughs> held there. <laughs> yeah, and the referee just said, come on. Yeah. <laughs> we're, going, we're, we're going another way. So it's, you know, one of those things to where it's like, you know, I mean, guy's a little smaller than you. You made it. You just had a bad touch towards the end, I guess. Foul called against Lucas. So it will be a Rapids free kick. Ah, nice defensive play there. That's just taking your eye off the ball for the Rapids player. Yeah, and it looks like that was a very quick substitution. I believe that's Andrew Cowart that's in for Lucas. Rapides possibly has an opportunity here. Yeah, and six. The ball gets to Gonzalez. Yeah, fifty-six minutes into this game, still four to one, uh, Menard. Call it a trip on that. Jude Meta with the foul. I will say this though, Nick. I'll bet you the Rapides players eat well. <laughs> <laughs> if they've got Waylon cooking at times for them. Yeah, um, you know, <laughs> ironically, he was talking about uh, he was talking about what they had for lunch and how it wasn't uh, it wasn't sufficient enough. So he was actually taking care of them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when I when I talked, to, oh, nice. He, wow, yeah. quite a hit from Galvan. <laughs> he, the guy's got a foot. He's not afraid to show that. Yeah, um, Menard needs to go recruiting and come over. <laughs> Oh, man, ball. you can't say that <laughs> R word. <laughs> <laughs> well, talk to him. Better than poaching. Gee, yeah. So, um, <laughs> what was it? Tom Boucher at fullforce.com? <laughs> 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 but, uh, or wh wh how you pronounce it? Wilder? Is that your, your uh, realty? The Wilder Group. Uh, Wilder, Wilder Group. Wilder Group. That's so, right. Um, but now, um, yeah, I guess that is going to be a, a, a point of emphasis for uh, – for Coach Perk this year, since Hicks is uh, graduating, I mean, I'm, I don't know if they have somebody in line, but they definitely have a lot of soccer players that might yeah. give it. And so There's a good bit of juniors on the team. Maybe not as many seniors. There's a lot of seniors, but they do have some juniors. I'm talking about kicking. Oh, kicking-wise, I, kicking yeah, I see. Oh, he's for the football team, yeah, yes. Yeah, he's trying to. Um, I think after, after going undefeated in district play and being a district champion, you know, hopefully there's going to be a lot of excitement for some of these boys to get out there and, and join the football team that maybe sat out and didn't play in the past. Yeah, one of the one of the funniest things that I heard this year at, at uh, on the one of the coach speak shows is when Coach Bell from <laughs> Pineville said that their one of their starting offensive lineman, who's a very big kid, athletic kid, said, "You know what? He was just a hall walker." <laughs> yeah, he was just a hall walker, and we had to <laughs> convince him to come out. And that's, and the reason I'm saying that is, if there are any young, young people out there in high school, junior high, that are watching this game and just think, ah, oh, you don't know if I could do it, try it, try it. I mean, this is what it's all about. There's multiple sports that you can try. There's a bunch of different things. There's activities that you can do. So, get out there and try it. You never know. You can become an all-district player this year and last year you were a hall walker well there are so many times you hear that where they hadn't played football in a while or whatever sport it is and just came out and you know ended up being a natural and well, that's what happened to me actually whenever I played football for a, a very short stint in Menard here uh, in the Eagles Nest and I got recruited from playing PE yeah <laughs> and just an NPE physical education uh, one of the co football coaches was watching how I was playing uh, football, and he's like, you should come try out. And I did, and I made the team, and it was it went very well. It actually helped me grow into not be afraid of the ball anymore if it's in the air. Oh, no, what do I do? It's going to hit. It's going to hurt. Oh, well, you just get back up, do it again. 
Yeah, and then you have some schools, like we were at Grace when we restarted soccer. It was I put a flyer up and said, all you have to do is be able to breathe and stand. <laughs> uh, walking and running is optional. We'll, <laughs> we'll teach you how to do those. Um, so, like I said, just get out there and try. I mean, you never know. Uh, and, you know, soccer is one of the sports to where a lot of kids in high school now, they played soccer when they were in elementary because it was just kind of what, you know, one of those things that a lot of people do. Here's a – Another counterattack here for Rapides. Gonzalez on this side. I'd like for him to go in him one-on-one. See, well, that's good defending there. Yeah, good job by Giordano. Yeah, good defending. Gonzalez might be a little tired, might be a little windy. He's been doing a lot of work on this side. But, um, you know, a lot of kids play, you know, rec or play upwards or, you know, they, they play when they're younger. And as they get a little bit older, you know, get the interest of something else. And then, you know, hey, try to come back and, and try it again. Same game, just a little, little more physical. We go. There's an opportunity here. Galvanta Gonzalez. Gonzalez a, crosses it that's, in. That's Beautiful a, uh, play. Wow. Good job from Gonzalez for the pass to Chavez. Kevin Chavez, number 17. Oh, and he's down. Um, Gonzalez is down, it looks like. Um, Could be cramping yeah. up, it looks like. I'm hoping it's a yeah, cramp. Yeah, that's not what it looked. Well, yeah. the way they're, uh, they all knew what it was, and they're up there bending that, those toes back toward the shin. That was an excellent, excellent cross. Assist there from Gonzalez, and uh, the finish was was it Mata? Was yeah. that the was it twenty eight who finished I it, think or it was or who was the who was the I one who finished it? Was. it? Okay, yeah, they it call, was Mata, yeah, yeah which they bad. call Chucho, and um, I mean there's number ten Gonzalez. The boy needs to be playing club somewhere. Anybody watching this who has anything to do with our local club soccer, get this ki get this kid a look. Let him have a try. I mean that was he's got a great one on one finish in the first half. That was, you know, so many people, so many soccer players, Matt and Tom, are selfish in that right there, right that, here. that last yeah. play, and they would have tried to shoot the ball. He got his head up, saw the man was wide, his teammate was wide open, and played a, I mean, perfectly weighted pass across. And then, of course, once again, you can't take anything away from the finish that, that Chucho had, uh, that Mata had him. So, hey, here we go, 4-2, and uh, – we got a ball game. Yes, we do. And I want to mention there was some good sportsmanship from Jay Guillory. He went to go check on Gonzalez. He wanted to see you know, what could be going on. Can I help at any aspect? Very good sportsmanship from that gentleman. Yeah, I'm glad that it's just a cramp. We, 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 we traditionally you see those a lot in in your you know fall sports because it's summertime comes you know it's very hot. But uh, but you know one of the things about winter sports is sometimes especially the past week. You know, these kids haven't been out. They haven't been doing a lot of physical activity and uh, no telling if they were drinking coffee Enough or water. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so there's. Diet Coke. That's right. So there's a lot of things that, that, that you have taken consideration. Yeah, they definitely got to keep the hydration up. Now how's, how's Menard going to respond here? Giordano here. 4-2 at the 23-minute mark nearly, or 23-and-a-half minutes, and uh, Rapids cut it to two. So this one's not over. Not at all. It's like, like we said before, those, those two differential games, ooh, those are some very dangerous games there. Menard's trying to reset, maybe trying to have something happen here. They're not playing so defensive-minded now. I think they're wanting to get another one in. Yeah. It's a little sloppy here, but th but this guy can change it quick. Good yeah. pass to r from Ryan Hicks to Siebenacher. Siebenacher back to Ryan Hicks. Ryan Hicks driving it down the line. Hicks passes it oh. to the middle, wide open. Oh, no one's there. Good defense from Rapide. Siebenacher does get the ball, but, oh, trips over his own feet. And it looks like Mata, uh-oh, there could be a possible counterattack here. Galvan gets it, oh, but loses it to the very strong defense from Richie. Yeah, and this is definitely where the the conditioning comes into play, but also just the fact that Rapides has just chased the ball for so much time that um that it's going to be you know very difficult. Nice tackle there, nice good tackle, kept bounds. the ball in. That's the best tackle is one that you win and you keep the possession, or you earn the possession. Galvan with the ball, not able to get it past Giordano. Oh, there, yeah. Galvan knocks it out. Good great pressure from Giordano. Yeah, great defense there. And, um, I mean, it forced him to make a turn out of bounds. So that's the way you – I was wondering a little, a little about him being in his back, but he, he defended well there. 
Looks like Gonzalez has checked back in, just waiting for the opportunity to sub. Now Menard's still keeping possession of the ball, which is really smart. You know, they're not not—they're making sure Gonzalez does not come back in because that man's a playmaker. He is a very good playmaker, like you were saying, Nick. But Menard with a possible opportunity here. Who is that up top now for Menard? Is that 26? Is from the top? Yeah. Fairbanks. Fairbanks, Fairbanks. That's what I was yep. thinking. I'm Fairbanks. Who am I? I can see the I can see the numbers on the back. It's just the front is very difficult mm -hmm. to see. But um, first time he's been in the game tonight, I think. Booger Manis. Looks like Nate Matthews is also in in the middle. Nice play here. Cowart trying to make something happen down on the far side. Crosses it back towards Matthews, but not able to get it back. Yeah, so twenty five oh. is Nate, huh? They called that because the kick was high at up around his face. More I than likely. I, I was looking down at my roster. So Yeah, that, that I'm pretty sure that was it. I have a giant pole in the way, so I'm not able to sell. <laughs> that was number ten. That's what happens. That was when Jude Nada, yeah. That's what happens when you're the third one here, that's Matt, right. You end I up know. behind the huh? I know. But, uh, Lowest on the totem pole. That's right. That's right. Well you could run camera and you'd be right in the center. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Ryan with an interception. He's going to try to make something happen. He's driving it down. Oh, gets Ma past Ramon. Matthews making a run on the back post, and he stops at the top of the – Ooh. Ooh, if he had time. I mean, Matthews was on top – was at the penalty spot. That was around the penalty spot, yeah. Yeah, so – but he earned a corner kick out of it. So, okay. Matthews, Matthews would be the kicker for football? It's his grandson. Oh, go figure. <laughs> Sophomore? He'll yeah. be goalie as well. Oh, goal. There oh. it is. That was a great shot on shot from the corner spot. Yeah, Jude. From there. Jude Maida. Did yeah. Jude actually get the goal? Yep, yeah, he, he got uh, the goal in. Yeah, he I, he I I would be curious to know talking to him, but I don't know if he saw the keeper. You know, um, kind of, kind of creep up or not, but that was a. Uh, I mean, it, it looked like that was that was his intention. Yeah, was he to was put it on goal. He was definitely intending to yeah. have that go right where the goal where the keeper should have been. That was sweet. Yeah, five two. Very high scoring game. I didn't think it'd be this as high scoring, in in this way. I definitely thought Menard. You know, they they are very favored to win this game, but I definitely anticipated them to win. By a little more of a differential. 20, 28 minutes in. Gonzalez is back in now. We see him trying to make something happen. Him and Harris to Galvan. Galvan opening it up a little more, gives it back to Harris to Gonzalez. Gonzalez gets around the defender, crosses it over, and it's good defense for Menard. Ooh, a hard foul call. Ooh. A little bit of a slam on the ball from J Jad Maida. That's, you don't really want to see that. Is that going to be a free kick? That will be a free kick for Rapids, the Mustangs. So who's in charge of setting this lineup? Is that Jad <laughs> Maida? Yeah, more than likely it will be because he is, He's like we said, he's the quarterback. He'll tell you what we need to do, but there is well one the key thing, the keeper. Yeah. The yeah. keeper needs to be the one to set – where the wall should go. We call it the wall. Yeah. Yeah, that. There's going to be a shot on goal here. Oh, Fantastic nice. save by Osier. Osier had to hit that over. He possibly could have grabbed it, but that would have just been too risky. I don't think he would have landed just correctly. So he, he knocks it over with his fists. Yeah, no, and that was Chucho with the shot. Uh, Jesus Mata. And yeah, no no reason there for Osier to, to even, you know, worry about trying to trying to catch it. Just, you know, get it over and uh, – and, and and play the next play the next play. So Mustang is going to try to do a set piece here. They don't have too many in the box right now. They still have that defensive mindset in. Gonzalez with the kick, a couple of Mustangs in the air, but not able to make good contact. Yeah, it looks like Hicks deflected that with his head. I might have saved a goal because there were two Mustangs that were right behind 
Run it right. onto that ball. I thought that was an interesting play because you you know you a lot of times you're just keeping your eye on the ball and watching the kick go in. Yeah. But that time I was looking at the other Mustang players and they were almost setting picks <laughs> like in basketball. <laughs> you know. It's <laughs> not saying it doesn't happen, Tom. Uh, not saying it doesn't it happen. Does you know. Uh, but it'll be a little more creative because it's not legal in soccer. So sometimes you'll sometimes you'll you little, know little brush off. That's like right. Football receivers. That's right. That's exactly right. Like the the. Yeah, the pick, the the pick that's not the pick on the the outside with the receivers. Right. So. Um, so yeah. Hicks getting a break, I guess, huh? Uh, he's on the other oh side no, now. He moved over. Changing it up. I think he realized he it's hard to get around Lucas Ramon. Oh, what a stop by the goalie for Ra There's oh, a bit of a push, on. and a penalty has been called. There is shoving by Lucas Ramon right into the chest of Andrew Cowart. And Andrew Cowart went down. Center referee is immediately on that. And he's calling a penalty kick off of that. That was definitely. I was writing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I, I was writing the save for Marler and the <laughs> shot for Hicks on my, on my stat. Uh, uh, Osher coming up to take the kick. Yeah. Senior night, yeah. yeah is okay. that what they're trying to do? Uh, well, let's see. We've got five defenders <laughs> for Bernard in the back here because Osier is no longer <laughs> in the in the goal. He's going to have to hustle back. That's does. right. Try to give him a chance to make a goal. It's fun to see a goalkeeper when they take a penalty kick. And there oh. it is. You know, sometimes you have to <laughs> – sometimes you have to worry about um, – <laughs> The keeper waiting for the whistle to blow. <laughs> 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 They're not used to it. That's right. So, <coughs> so Ozer, Ozer getting a uh, goal on senior night. The and goal all the Eagles, wow. all the Eagles are happy about that as well. So we're almost 32 minutes in. Now, I, if I were Ozer, I'd be turning around right about now because we've seen it before, haven't we, Nick, where – Referee will blow the whistle a little early, and that someone will just, you know what, I'm just going to shoot it. Yep. We and it'll go in. We actually scored a goal when I coached it at Bolton um, against Pineville to tie for the district championship, Patrick Sadler. Uh, we talked about it because they had a they had a goalkeeper who liked to celebrate and yeah. liked to come up a little mm -hmm. bit. They scored, and we come, I mean, right off that exact kickoff. And uh, – had it touched to uh, Patrick. Patrick had enough, you know, leg to to score, and we we worked on that. We worked on that a lot. So um, just because of that situation. And Patrick ended up having a, a son, Will, that, that ended up coming to Menard and playing soccer. Was a and was a club player that was uh, my son Tyler's age. So uh, so good to see another generation. And his brother Briggs has. A daughter that's at Ash, and and some other kids that are playing soccer. So good to see that we have second generation players here. Yeah, it's yeah. nice to see kids staying in, you know, mm -hmm. in the area, raising yeah. their families. Yeah, and uh, well, Nate Matthews is uh, Daryl's grandson, Miss Cindy's grandson. Their the, the the mom, you know, Betty Jo, she played soccer here at Menard and at Crossroads. So. And more second generation players here. Briggs Briggs played baseball. Briggs was a center fielder. Yeah, yeah. played left field on the same team. Was a very good, was an uh, you know all district all sin law you know player. Uh, we um, went to the state semifinals that year. Our senior year lost to Woodlawn. Uh, Donovan Davis, who you know Miss Davis is your yep. assistant principal here, was a senior on that. He pitched and played first base with us. So. Um, you know, on the team. So, yeah, a lot of a lot of connections here. I was part of a coaching staff for Dixie uh, Majors. Okay. Baseball, and Briggs was on the all-star team that we went to the state tournament, lost in the finals to Lake Charles, and they went on to win the World Series. We actually should have won that game. Wow. But, uh, but that was a loaded team with Jeff Lamont. Oh, yeah. Uh, Juan Pierre. Yep. Yep, that's that's my that's my age. Courtney uh, Jenkins. Courtney, yes, man, you man, you bringing up some some memories there. Wesley Welch. <laughs> yes, 
Funny story about Wesley Welch. Our senior year, he went 4-0 and as a pitcher, and all four wins were against us. Mm. <laughs> two in tournaments and two in district. Um, yeah, we had Bo Silva at catcher. Oh, wow. Okay. It was a it was a loaded team. Yeah, Bo went to Peabody, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, yep. And, uh, was and now he's a neighbor of mine. Okay, awesome. Over in, over in Pineville. And then uh, – Trying to think who else we had. Uh, Jody White's grandson, Wesley. Um, shoot. Well, um, Courtney Jenkins was was Jody's grandson. No. No. Uh, he no, wasn't? no. 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 Courtney. Courtney was from uh, Ohio. Okay. And his mother and father, you know, moved here. His dad's a uh, a lawyer with the uh, army. Okay. Jag uh, Jag officer and okay then, uh, and then. Uh, Civilian. Uh, Ooh. Ooh, that could have been dangerous. Was, yes, yeah. that could have been dangerous. Yeah. I thought he was about to face plant that table. Civilian lawyer for Fort Polk, and, and he was he was the head coach. We I, I assisted with him on the sheriff's posse that summer, and we won the league and <laughs> and ended up uh, coaching nice ball there in Gonzales. Gonzales. That was a lot of fun. In fact, back then, the, the cell phones were massive. Yeah. And Briggs' dad, Brenner. <laughs> he had, had Zach so Morris phone, as we called him. Yeah. Zach Morris from Say by the Bell. But he know? was kind enough to let me have it because I was anchoring Jambalaya and, and and New News at the time. But I would do Jambalaya and then drive up to Shreveport <laughs> for the games. <laughs> and then I would call in and do a live update on the phone. Wow. That's awesome. For uh, for the games. In fact, I did one during the game. I was in the dugout doing a doing one of the six o'clock news. Wow! In one of our games, there was a guy named Mike Rose that played for Shreveport. I don't know if you remember that name. But no, mm. he was a Division One pitcher, going to be a Division One pitcher. He was and Courtney that went up against him. Yeah, yeah, he's offside there. That was a little ambitious That's by Fairbanks, but uh. <laughs> Coach Campbell made, uh, mentioned to us, Daryl mentioned to us, that that's a common occurrence <laughs> for the young man, but uh, yeah. You just need to be aware. You yeah. just need to have that awareness. Well, you know, you get excited, you know, six goals, you know, you want to try to try to put your name on the score sheet and, you know, but uh, but he'll he'll figure it out at some point. Ball was still rolling, unfortunately. I'll have to retake that. Yeah. Six to two Eagles. We're at the 37-minute mark. Not going to be too much downtime. Well, we did have the the uh, leg cramping. And the few that goals that we've, we've had in the second half, too. We had, what, three in the second half? One for Rapids, two for Menard. That's right. Well, it's been a pleasure, you guys. I know we're coming down to the end. When we get to the end and the whistle blows, we'll run a couple of commercials and we'll be closed out already, you know, pretty much closed out. But uh, certainly enjoyed the broadcast with both of y'all, wealth of knowledge in soccer. Yeah, it's I'm been fun. I'm sure anybody who uh, tuned in tonight will have enjoyed listening to both of you guys and putting up with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been fun to be back. I haven't been able to be a part of too many too many soccer games this this year, uh, kind of by choice to an extent, but uh, we our, our the schedule for Grace has been backloaded with home games, and uh, so we're supposed to have five five games that are supposed to be home over the next the next seven days, and uh, I don't know if uh, that's going to happen with the weather, but uh, but it's good to be back out. Uh, good to see local competition like this, um, especially with. Um, you know, two teams that are going to be in the playoffs uh, in Division Four uh, on the on the boys' side, and then you know Menard's girls starting to make a little run. You know, yeah. getting a little get. Ooh, what a finish! Oh, wow, it is. what a job by Cowart. That was fantastic. Just hit it right over the goalie. Yeah, nice little half volley there. Ball comes down. He, he never really lets it hit the ground, and uh, you know, may call the keeper off. You know, off a little bit, but that uh, was still a, a great finish there to, to hit it right under the crossbar. We're into the downtime now, which includes this time here as we get set for uh, Rapids to kick it back in. 7-2 to the score tonight. That probably will end up being the final. We'll see. But a, a five-point victory for the Eagles or goal victory. Not sure 
if you use the word point or not. Goal. It, yeah. So we'll Goal's fine. Yeah. The one thing that, uh, you know, one thing about this is, uh, you know, this definitely um, should help um, should help their power rating. You know, uh, Rapids has six six wins and two two ties, so so that'll definitely help the power rating for Menard. Keep them, you know, in the top one or two should after tonight, and um, and uh, you know, really catapulting them, you know, into into the uh, playoff run that hopefully will be be deep for them as well. Well, and that's key too because uh, if I'm not mistaken. The higher seed yes. will always have the home game now. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the changes that were made at the LHSAA. So as long as they remain number one and they continue to win, they will have all their home games, uh, all their playoff games here till they get to the finals. That's correct. You know, and we, we learned that in football this year whenever, you know, we thought, and there's the game. There it is. And that's the, the ball game. <laughs> that's it. The uh, match. Seven to two, the final. Uh, I tell you what, we'll take a quick commercial break and we'll come back and close it out uh, if you guys don't mind. Our mobile banking app is changing the way we bank. Things are getting easier, transactions are getting safer, and you have access 24-7. All the functionality of banking you're used to made easier to use anywhere, anytime, and more secure than ever. Simple, seamless, safe. Download our mobile app today. live at the Eagles Nest as you can see the Menard Eagle uh, soccer team being cheered on by the fans for their 7-2 to victory and we're going to close it out and get some final thoughts from you two guys but, in, uh, but before we do Matt we'll have to thank Deacon uh, Mitchell for uh, calling up and it was J.R. Welch that's right that yeah we were talking about Jody Jody uh, uh, Jody White yeah. Jody White's uh, grandson uh, on that baseball team but uh, uh Give us your thoughts, uh, Matthew, on, uh, on on the second half in the game. Uh, very well played by both teams. Um, <coughs> Menard still kept that possession going, but then they started realizing, you know, we need to start increasing the amount of pressure that we give and really just kind of take it to them and make sure that we finish off this game. But Rapides, they did a great job of trying to make something happen. Gonzalez, fantastic play from Gonzalez. He was doing great work. Um, making a lot of plays happen down on the offensive half, um, and they were just trying to trying to give them a little more of a challenge against Menard. And uh, and Nick, wrap it up with some final stats. Yeah, I think um, you know obviously Menard had had most possession, uh, seven goals. Uh, Gage Ozier, you know, having a goal. Um, Andrew Coward with a goal. Um, Jad Mida with uh, with a goal, and then. Um, Let's see here. Uh, Jude made it with a goal. Then Jake Giller with a goal. Luke Griffin with a goal. So that's their seven. And then the, for the Rapids, their two goals were Aaron Gonzalez on that on that one on one finish in the first half, and then um, Jesus Mata Chucho with a goal in the second half off the assist from uh, from Gonzalez. But uh, I th you know about what was expected. Um, you know when you look at it, I mean Menard's just. You know, very experienced, very, you know, senior heavy. But, you know, even there are two sophomores that are, you know, in Griffin and and Jude uh, uh, Maida that's, that's you know, very quality players. And uh, and this is a good win for them. I mean, this is kind of puts them in the driver's seat for the district championship, which, uh, which you know, as expected. And, um, and let's see what this playoff run is going to be like. 
Well, it's been great uh, being up in the booth with both of you guys, and uh, we haven't set when our next game is, but uh, we'll be back out here to cover uh, both the girls and, and the boys uh, here on the soccer field. But you can tune in tomorrow night to watch the girls' basketball team here on 446 Sports. I'll be calling the game. I think the tip-off is at 6 p.m., and, uh, and we'll, we'll be live for that game. Uh, so uh, don't don't miss that one. But we thank you all for joining this one again. Uh, uh, go out and and uh, and support all the 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 uh, all of our sponsors uh, that uh, that are that you saw the commercials running for this. Uh, and uh, just a quick name: Baylex, Federal Credit Union, Wallace Eye Center, Bayou Designs, uh, uh, our BU Designs, Walk Ons, BK Distributors, Quibidos, Kim Harrell Appraisals. Southern Air, Talk to the Hawk, and Doug Young Nursery. And, uh, but that'll wrap it up for us. Mr. Campbell, thanks for everything up here. And for Matthew Scafano and Nick Magnano, I'm Tom Boucher. This has been a, a broadcast of Menard Eagles Soccer from the Eagles Nest in Alexandria, Louisiana on 446 Sports. God bless. <laughs>